this studio in Holbrook. Instructor John Benedict teaches traditional karate classes to young men and women of all ages. <laughs> Across the hall in the Marshall and Performing Arts Center, his wife Mariana, a classically trained musician, teaches vocal and instrumental lessons. Together, they built this business after John Benedict, a cancer survivor, regained his health, but in the process had to start from scratch. Well, a doctor claimed I had um, a bunch of cancer in my stomach and they said if I didn't um, go for surgery, um, I'd be dead in six months. I spent about seven years in and out of the hospital. Um, and when I lost everything, I lost, you know, everything. Uh, I had $13 left in the bank and we started this business with a prayer and um, we found a building that was needed to fix up. So I fixed up the building, the woman gave me a couple of free months and we started this business basically with $13 in the bank and that's what karate teaches you is how to get up and do something. Don't sit there, you're not gonna make it if you just lay there on the couch and do nothing. The motivation and discipline was able to get me up and to start over. At the time that we met when we were dating, I was teaching music out of different music studios and I was also finishing up my music degree at Stony Brook University and he thought, you know, he mentioned to me, well, why don't you just go into business for yourself? So we decided to open up the Marshall and Performing Arts Center and I'd get a little room where I teach music and he does his karate thing and we think of it as yin and yang. The Benedict's family also set up a separate room that serves as a food pantry. At least twice a month, several hundred families from Suffolk County receive donated bags of food. For John Benedict, life lessons and the discipline of karate have motivated him to give back to his community. Well, that's very important to us as um, martial artists that we go out there and help people, not just hurt people. I grew up very poor. I've never had anything given to me. Everything I've earned or worked for myself, I've just never turned my back on my community. I remember where I came from. And if it wasn't for my karate teacher keeping me off the street, I'd be dead or in jail. I mean, it was, in the 80s, was all gangs. And, you know, all my friends were in gangs. Everyone was in gangs. But this kept me off the street. So, like I said, I want to give back to my community what, what they did for me. They saved me. Maybe I can save some others. There are plenty of people in need. And uh, you can really see that when you run the pantry. You know, people are grateful. They come in here and they're like, I haven't had an apple in six weeks. Or I haven't had meat in I can't even remember when because they can't afford it. So that's why we do the pantry because people in our community need help. And if they can't look to their neighbors to help them, where are they going to get the help from? But now their livelihood and service to others is being threatened by damages before and since Hurricane Sandy. We've always had problems with our roof. The hurricane literally ripped all the shingles off of the roof. I was actually here during Sandy. It, it was like a scene from a disaster movie. In one second, the winds from the hurricane ripped off this huge section of the roof. So landlord knew as it was happening how bad the roof was during the hurricane. And then we had ample notice for the nor'easter that came the week after. So we're on the phone with the landlord like, hey, when are you going to fix this? And oh yeah, we're waiting on the insurance company, blah, 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 it'll be soon. Okay, in the meantime, during that nor'easter, it was literally a downpour on the inside. So all of November and a good portion of December, every time it rained outside, it rained in here. The condition of the roof and the amount of time it took the landlord to fix it has forced the Benedicts to make difficult choices. We have mold growing in the walls, kids are complaining they're getting sick, so we're forced to leave and we can't afford. We're, most of our money goes towards our community in the food pantry, so now that's being taken away so we can move. So. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if it's going to affect the food pantry. I mean, we only get so much from Long Island Cares and Long Island Harvest, but we're just hoping for the best. Uh, we, we might lose our whole business. I mean, we could lose everything. Um, right now, we're, you know, 
We don't charge a lot of money here for karate. We try to keep it as cheap as possible so we can keep the kids off the street. But it's a delicate balance here. You know, one big move can wipe us out. I'm just living on a prayer at this point. I'm praying that it all works out because uh, this is my livelihood. This is my life. I mean, it's not just my sole source of income for John and I, but we love our work here and, and the charity work too. And that could all come to an end because of this landlord's negligence. And it's just really sad. John and Mariana Benedict are searching to move into an affordable location, but could use assistance, suggestions, and donations. For more information, contact mmalongisland.com. For Push Pause from Holbrook, this is Stephanie Brumsey. Oh!